imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. You're in your tent and at night you hear voices. You come outside from your tent and you see people leaving the camp of Imam Hussain in their hundreds and thousands. When you're looking around to see what's going on, for a split second, your eyes fall onto the face of Imam Hussain You see him in sadness and sorrow. There and then you decide you're going to stay, knowing that it's going to be Ashura tomorrow. So you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, it's now the 10th of Muharram, it's the day of Ashura. You come up to Imam Hussain and you ask him how you can help him and he gives you the choice. So he says to you, for example, you can go and get water with Abul Fadl al-Abbas for the children. You can stand guard in front of the tents of the women and children. You can go and fight in, in the army against the enemies. You can play with the other little kids to try and keep them happy so that they, they forget about their dad being killed in the battlefield. What would you want to do on that day? I would go with Abu Fadl Abbas um, to get water for all the children and women because um, they would be very thirsty because they're being cut off from the water. So um, even though um, I would have to die trying to get the water, I would still try. Why is it so important to get the water? Um, because uh, if if you don't get uh, if you don't have enough water, because um, seventy percent of your body is made of water. So if you don't have enough, um, you might get dehydrated, and you will get ill. Now imagine you're at school. You've had a long day at school. It's now home time. Your dad or your mum's come to pick you up. You get in the car, you drive home. You open the house door and the rest of your family are all running around the house. One person's trying to get fruit ready, another person's trying to cook food, another person's making tea. And it looks like you've got visitors, you've got guests that have come to see you. So you ask them what's going on, who's come to see us? And one of them replies, they haven't come to see us, they've come to see you. So you ask, okay, who is it? You're thinking maybe it's a friend from school or a friend from mosque or a friend from out down the street. And they say, he's waiting for you in the living room. Go, go quickly. So you run to the living room, you open the door, you walk inside and you see sitting on the chair is Imam Hussain alayhi In that moment, what would you want to say to him? What would you want him to say to you? I would um, actually don't know. I would be speechless. Um, because um, such a holy man has come to see me. What would you want him to say to you? What would you be happy with to hear from him? Um, I would be happy to hear um, good news. So like, um, if, say, um, So there was someone ill, and um, they uh, they have um, been nursed back to health. Would you want him to say stuff like, "I'm happy with you. I've accepted your service." Would you want him to say these things about your family as well? So now, you've sat and talked with Imam Hussain and he's getting up to leave your house as a farewell message 
what would you say to him? I would say, um... As a final thing, he's leaving your home. He's just come to see you. Now he's going. I would thank him for visiting. Would you invite him back again? Yeah, I, I would ask him to come, come again for um, dinner or for uh, tea or something. So at the beginning, I asked you about 1400 years ago. I asked you about a day where you already know what's happened. You already know from history, from mosque, from reading, the events that took place. And out of them you picked Hazrat Abbas salam. So now in this day and age, we have an Imam that's with us as well. He might not be physically here in person, but we do believe that he's alive and he's amongst us. And in a way, him not being directly next to you in person and telling you what to do, he's given you a choice in how you want to serve him. So what do you think you've done for the 12th Imam? How do you think the 12th Imam feels about you? Um, I think he, he feels well because um, I, I'm, I'm still um, 11 and I've, um, in Ramadan I've been fasting, I've been um, praying, I've, um, I've also um, given to charity from my own money and I've helped out in a mosque. So I think he would be proud. He would be proud. Oh, my God.